Today, I have a highly requested video for you. I'm reviewing my favorite mineral sunscreens. to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we get into the specific mineral sunscreens, I think it's important to review what mineral sunscreen really means. So mineral sunscreens are also known as physical sunscreens and are also known as inorganic sunscreens. And really all that means is that the UV filters are either zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or some combination of both of those. The easiest way to tell if you're working with a mineral sunscreen is to look at the jar or the packaging. It will list out the active UV filters and you should see only zinc oxide or titanium dioxide or both of those listed there. If you see any other ingredients, that means it's a hybrid sunscreen or a pure chemical sunscreen. I personally don't have a preference for mineral sunscreens or chemical sunscreens. As a dermatologist, my goal is for you to find a sunscreen that you absolutely love, but some people may prefer a mineral sunscreen for a variety of reasons. Now, chemical filters can be great on a lot of people's skin. For example, they never really cause me any problems, but for some people, if they have particularly sensitive skin, they may be reaching for pure mineral sunscreens just to avoid any potential irritation. And based on the patients that I see in clinic, I also know that a lot of patients with melasma or hyperpigmentation sometimes think that they have to use a mineral or physical sunscreen. This is actually a myth, so I just wanna put that out there. If you have hyperpigmentation, you don't have to use a physical sunscreen. We want you using some type of sunscreen consistently, but a chemical or a mineral sunscreen is appropriate. Another reason why someone may opt for a mineral sunscreen is based on how they work. So a lot of people think that mineral sunscreens work by reflecting UV rays off of the skin, while chemical sunscreens work by absorbing UV rays. But the reality is both mineral and chemical sunscreens work very, very similarly. They both work by absorbing UV radiation and converting that radiation into unharmful heat. Now, mineral filters do reflect a very small amount of UV radiation, but they work principally the exact same way. But regardless of your reasoning for why you may want to use a mineral sunscreen, my goal is to help you find one that works for you. So here are some of my faves. For context, I have dry, slightly sensitive skin. And what's something that's probably quite obvious is that I also have fair skin. And that's something important to note when we're talking about mineral sunscreens because zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, these mineral UV filters start essentially as white powders that turn into white paste. And for some skin tones, they are going to leave some degree of white cast that can be Desirable. Now, there are certain things you can do with the formula to mitigate that white cast, whether it means adding a tint or changing the overall formulation, but all of these to some degree have the potential at least to leave a white cast. And it's really up to you and your personal experience to decide if that white cast is too much for you to not want to use the sunscreen. I also just want to put out there that you do not have to spend a ton of money to find an amazing sunscreen, but the sunscreens I've included in this video, I've really picked based on performance and my personal experience with them. Mineral sunscreens are often formulated with a tint to help cover up some of that white cast, but there are a couple of untinted mineral sunscreens that I like, so we'll talk about those first. First up, I have the Murad Environmental Shield SPF 50. So reasons I really like this sunscreen, it comes in a dropper bottle, which isn't technically my favorite type of packaging, but this one, the dropper measures out about exactly a quarter teaspoon, which is the amount you need to cover your entire face. I love how smooth and milky it is, and then it leaves this really soft satin finish on the skin. This uses zinc oxide exclusively as the mineral filter and it does leave a very slight white cast on me, but the reason I like this sunscreen so much, and this is sort of a theme of my favorite untinted mineral sunscreens, is that it applies so beautifully under makeup. One tip I have when applying mineral sunscreens, especially if they're untinted, is to work in layers. So I often will apply just about half the recommended amount as a first layer, I'll let that set up for a minute, and then I'll go in with a second layer. This helps with the application and helps reduce the white cast as well. Another untinted mineral sunscreen that I really like is the Isden Erifotona Actinica SPF 50. This also comes in sort of a tinted version. It's the Erifotona Ageless. The tint is just a little bit too deep and too warm for my skin tone, but I think both of these are really good mineral options, both because they go on really seamlessly, but also because they play well under makeup. Now I will say this does leave a little bit of a white cast on my skin, but again, I'm typically wearing it under a little bit of foundation or tinted moisturizer, and that cancels that out. This uses 11% zinc oxide as the mineral filter, and it's water resistant for 40 minutes. This is actually probably the most common mineral sunscreen that I use on my son when we're going into the water or going to the pool or the beach. One thing that's important to note about this sunscreen, and actually the Murad sunscreen is well is that it's not a particularly moisturizing sunscreen. So I think it's actually really nice if you have oily skin, but if you have dry skin, I would 
put a good layer of moisturizer on first before layering this on top. And then the last untinted mineral sunscreen that I'll mention is the Pipette Mineral SPF 50. I think this is a little bit of a controversial sunscreen. Some people absolutely love it and some people think it leaves way too much of a white cast, but it's probably my most used sunscreen on my son, Theo, who's 17 months now. And I like it because I actually can see where I apply it. The white cast is beneficial in this case. I also like it because it's really affordable. It comes in a nice big tube and I don't feel bad just like chucking it in my backpack and bringing it with me wherever I go. This also is a zinc oxide based sunscreen. It is not waterproof, so it's great for days at the park. But again, I like to use my Isden Erifitone Actinica if we're going in the water. Now, you don't have to use a mineral sunscreen on your child. I think some people feel more comfortable with it because they feel like there's less systemic absorption of mineral filters. But in reality, I use both chemical and mineral sunscreens on my own child. So let's move on to tinted mineral sunscreens. Screens. The first up, I didn't, I didn't really know if it fell under untinted or tinted because it has the slightest yellow tint, and that is the Summer Fridays Shade Drops SPF 30. I do want to note I advise for Summer Fridays, but I have zero obligation to talk about this sunscreen. I just really like it. This is a zinc-based, non-water resistant sunscreen. It comes out as a very thin, liquidy milk, and I just love how lightweight it is. I do like to wear a moisturizer underneath because it can be pretty drying if worn on its own, but I really love how it rubs into the skin. The finish on this is quite natural. Natural, so you're not really dewy or glossy, but it's also not a matte finish. And that's why I like it because you can kind of wear it on its own. You could wear it under makeup, which I do a lot. And it's actually pretty easy to reapply. And that's pretty hard to find in a mineral sunscreen. Another tinted mineral sunscreen that I really like is the Kinship Self Reflect SPF 32 sunscreen. I love this for dry skin. One problem with a lot of mineral sunscreens is because they have zinc oxide, which is somewhat of a drying ingredient, they can feel a little bit chalky on dry skin. But this one is so emollient and so moisturizing and I love it, especially in the winter. And even though this is tinted, it is a very light tint. One problem that I often have with tinted sunscreens is they almost have too much tint in them. They're either too orange or too dark. So if you have fair skin and you want something to sort of mitigate the white cast, I think this is a really nice option. This uses 22.4% zinc oxide and is not water resistant. And when you look at all these sunscreens that I'm talking about, you might see how the amount of zinc or the percent of zinc is really varies from one to the other. And that doesn't necessarily necessarily determine the SPF. Of course, it's one aspect of it, but it's really the formula overall that determines the sun protection factor of the sunscreen. This also has a little bit of natural fragrance to it. It has a very light hint of vanilla, and I find the smell really pleasant. This sunscreen is known for playing nice with blemish prone or acne prone skin. So if you're someone out there who's struggling with breakouts and can't find a sunscreen that works for you, I think this is a really nice option. Oftentimes people who are acne prone tend to be oily and people who are acne prone and dry feel like there are not a lot of good sunscreen options for them, but this one's it. So that was a sunscreen that I think is amazing for people who have dry skin, but I gotta give people with oily skin an option too. And I really love the Elta MD UV Physical SPF 41. This sunscreen uses a combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and it has a really nice, neutral tint. I feel like sometimes they're too peachy or too warm, and this one sits right in the middle. In terms of texture, it's quite moussey, almost whipped, and so I find that it layers really well under makeup, and when you apply it, it has this nice pore blurring effect. Sometimes I'll have patients in my office who are acne prone and teenagers, and they want to wear makeup, but maybe their parents aren't so thrilled about the idea that they want to wear foundation. I think this kind of meets people in the middle. You get that SPF protection, but you also get a little bit of tint and coverage, and it's sort of the perfect balance. This is also one of my favorite sunscreens to use after a procedure. So whether that's microneedling or laser resurfacing, I like this because it's great for sensitive skin. You get a little bit of coverage. So if you're a little red after your procedure and it just feels really nice. The next mineral sunscreens that I want to talk about are actually sort of two in one. They're both by color science. So I feel like they kind of go together. One is sort of the original and the other one is the Face Shield Flex. These are both SPF 50 sunscreens. The original is a very light peachy tint with a very light shimmer. And then the Flex are much more heavily pigmented. This is perhaps my most worn combo of sunscreens. So for a long time before they came out with the Flex, I used the Color Science original on its own under makeup. Once they came out with the Flex, I started combining them. So I would either layer the original and put the Flex on top or I'd actually mix them. And I actually wanna talk about mixing sunscreens because I feel like, especially if you're working with tinted sunscreens, a lot of people are inclined to mix their sunscreens to get the perfect tint or even inclined to mix makeup into their sunscreen. You really should never do that because it changes the overall formula. However, certain brands will approve or okay mixing their sunscreens together and Color Science is one of those. 
The way I like to apply this is put one full layer of the original Color Science on my skin. That's really serving as my protective layer. And then I mix in equal parts a little bit of the fair shade of the Face Shield Flex and the medium shade. And that's what gives me really good coverage. This is probably one of my favorite ways to wear makeup in the summer, but still be super, super protected. I think if you try to wear the Flex on its own and you're actually using the proper amount or a quarter teaspoon of product for your face, it's going to be too thick and too heavily pigmented. So that's why I really like to layer this with the other Color Science sunscreen. I also like that these are water and sweat resistant. If I was going to a pool party and I actually wanted to look cute, this combo of sunscreens is what I would wear. And then the last mineral sunscreen that I'm including in this video is the Coats Flawless Complexion SPF 50. This is sort of a thicker, creamier, more moisturizing sunscreen. So I really like it in the winter months. It doesn't dry down entirely. It still has a little bit of a tacky finish even after you let it set up. So I do like to put a little bit of powder over it to make it look its best. But one reason I really like this is because it has that richly tinted option. The richly tinted option, of course, is too dark for my skin, but I think it's a really good option for people who have more melanin rich skin who are still looking for a mineral sunscreen that's going to leave a minimal cast. This is a great sunscreen for sensitive or acne prone or rosacea prone skin. So I feel like it plays well with a lot of different skin types as well. And one thing I'm realizing about a lot of the sunscreens that I mentioned today is they actually come in bottles that are bigger than the traditional 1.7 ounces. And I always love when a sunscreen comes in a bigger bottle because I really think it encourages proper use. So many people under apply their sunscreen and therefore don't get the stated SPF protection on the bottle. And I feel like working with a little bit more product helps prevent that. Something that's really important, especially with working with mineral sunscreens or sunscreens that are more likely to leave a cast is that you still want to put enough on. So you need about a quarter teaspoon for the face, more if you're including other areas on the body. And it's not a good sunscreen if when you apply the right amount, you don't wanna wear it. I actually think finding amazing mineral sunscreens is one of the most challenging skincare tasks. So if you have other mineral sunscreens that you absolutely love, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.